Hi, I'm Dennis Hoyle from Bellwether Games. Today I'm going to teach you how to play the game Swamped. Swamped is a game for two to four players that was designed by Ben Gerber and published by Bellwether Games. It plays in about 15 to 30 minutes for players 13 and up. There are also rules for the one player Lonely Jungle variant on bellwethergames.com. Even though Swamped is a small game, it is a big adventure. So before you get started, clear a big space on the table for you to play. Here is a list of the times the different sections in this video begin. Feel free to skip ahead to the section you are ready to watch. Okay, let's take a look at the contents of the game. In the box you will find a deck of 44 square playing cards, two wooden tokens, and a set of rules. In the deck you'll find seven adventurer cards that look like this. On the back of each adventurer card is a swamped guide card to help you remember your turn options. There are also four two-sided treasure cards that look like this. Here you can see the croc token and croc card, which indicates the speed of the croc token. There are 16 coordinate cards in the deck shown here. These will determine the number of spaces each player may move the boat. And these six let's move cards will determine when the boat moves. You will notice the backs of the coordinate cards and let's move cards are swamp cards that look like this. These cards make up the deck and players' hands. In addition to the other swamp cards are two start cards. These are two-sided as well. And the last card you'll need to start playing is the pilot card, shown here. The game also comes with four swamp tiger cards and a waterfall card. These, along with the swamp tiger icons on each swamp card, are for expansion play only. After you've become a Swamped expert, try these expansion cards for a new experience. Now that I've shown you all of the contents of the game, I'm going to teach you how to set up to play. First, shuffle the seven adventurer cards and deal one, face down, to each player. The card you're dealt is your identity and represents your personal mission in the game. Keep it secret from the other players until the end. For instructional purposes, I've dealt these cards face up so you can see them. I'll be teaching you the game as it is played by four players. So here you see four adventurer cards, one per player. Now let's set up the deck. Do you remember those coordinate cards and let's move cards I showed you? Find and shuffle those together with only the map side showing to form the deck. Deal three cards from the deck to each player face down. Since these cards are two-sided, face down just means the map side is showing. After dealing, set the deck to the side within reach of all players. Now let's begin building the swamp. Choose one side of either start card and set it in the middle of the table. We'll be building the swamp by adding cards to this side of the start card during the game. Next. Find the boat token and place it on the big start space. Now set up the treasure cards by placing them near the start card with the zero pointing toward the swamp. These cards show how much of each treasure we've collected at any given time. So for instance, if the four is pointing toward the swamp, it means we've collected four of that treasure. Place the croc card near the start card with the easy side pointing toward the swamp. The number pointing toward the swamp shows the speed of the croc at any given time. For a harder game, start the croc with a higher difficulty level. You'll be rotating this card to the next number any time King's Foil is collected. Now it's time to assign the pilot. Give the player who last went on a journey the pilot card. This player will gain a few special privileges, which I'll explain as we go. The pilot's first privilege is to receive two bonus cards from the deck. The pilot now selects any two of the five cards from their hand and aligns them next to the start card in the same orientation. The last thing to do to set up the game is to place the croc token on the space with the croc icon on the first card next to the start. This is where the croc will start. Okay, we are all set up and ready to go. Now I'll explain to you how to play, starting with the goal of your mission. Move the boat to at least three samples of King's Foil, and then get out of the swamp, alive. How does the boat move? 
It only moves left, right, up, or down, never diagonal. It cannot move through walls of mangrove trees, seen here, and once it moves to a new card, it cannot move back to the one it left. These spaces indicate the different treasures in the swamp you can collect. Each one relates to a different treasure card that we set up. The tiger does not have a corresponding treasure card and should be ignored unless you are playing the expansion rules included in the game. To collect a treasure, move the boat to or through any space with the treasure icon. Here you see us moving to a space with the king's foil icon. So we collect one king's foil and show this by rotating the king's foil card. If we collect more than three of any treasure, just flip the card to its back to keep collecting. The card goes up to seven, but there is no limit. If you collect more than seven, place a marker on the card for each additional treasure collected. Now I need to note, you can only collect one treasure per icon, so we can't go back over this space where we just collected King's Foil to collect it again, but we can go to a different King's Foil space and collect a second one. After we collect three King's Foil, if we can navigate the boat out of the swamp by way of any space with an arrow, the mission is a success. Congratulations! You just learned how to collect King's Foil and get out of the swamp. It sounds easy, right? Well, maybe it's not quite that simple. All players also have two secret objectives on their adventurer card. Here is the photojournalist. You can see the two secret objectives. Your score at the end is the objective you complete that earns you the most points. The photojournalist will earn two points for every bluefisher and mooncap collected, or she will earn 14 points if the boat leaves the swamp on the seventh map card or later. At the end of the game, you'll compare your adventurer card score with the other players to find out who wins. But remember, you only score points if the whole team first collects three king's foil and gets out of the swamp. If you aren't able to complete this main objective, all players share defeat. Now that you've learned about your objectives, it's time to learn what you can do on your turn. Take a look at the three cards you were dealt for your hand. Remember, these are two-sided cards. The side you'll be playing during the game is the non-map side, the coordinate and let's move cards. You have two options on your turn. You can either play one card or discard one card, taking care to complete any associated actions. After playing or discarding, draw a card from the deck, if one is available, and end your turn. Now let's learn about each turn option and the associated actions in more detail, starting with the option to play a card. For demonstration purposes, I've set four adventurer cards face up on the table to show where each player is seated in relation to one another. Find a space between all players that will serve as the play area. This is where you'll be playing your cards. Let's start by playing a coordinate card. To play a coordinate card, just place it face up in the play area, taking special note of the numbers in each corner. The number that points toward you is the number of spaces you'll be able to move when it's your turn to move the boat. New coordinate cards must either start a pile of a new color or be played on a pile of the same color. So as you can see here, we have to start a new pile for this purple card. Again, choosing the direction we want each corner to point. If we were to play a green card, we would have to play it on top of the existing green pile. When you play on a pile of the same color, you must increase the number in your corner. Your corner is the one pointing toward you. So if you were the photojournalist in this example, your corner is the one in the upper left, and you would have to play this card with the two pointing toward you, since it is the only corner higher than one. If you can't increase the number in your corner, you'll have to play a different card or discard instead. So that's how you play coordinate cards. Now I will explain how you can play Let's Move cards. The Let's Move card is a very important card, and a lot of things are going to happen when it's played. Take care to note who played the Let's Move card, so that you will know whose turn it is to play or discard next, after all the associated actions occur. To play a Let's Move card, place it on top of a pile of coordinate cards, in such a way that you can see all four corners beneath the Let's Move card. Now let's walk through the associated actions that will occur when the Let's Move card is played. First, give the pilot card to the next player in clockwise order. Next, the player with the light colored corner moves the boat the number of spaces shown in their corner. So, as you can see here, 
the engineer can move the boat one space. Then, each player in clockwise order from the light-colored corner has the option to move the boat according to the number in their corner. So now, the biochemist will move the boat one space, because she has a one in her corner. And now the photojournalist moves the boat two spaces, because she has a two in her corner. Now it's the executive's turn to move the boat. The pilot card gives the player holding it a plus one movement bonus any time they move the boat. So the executive can move two spaces, one for the number in his corner and one bonus space for the pilot card. Remember, whenever you land on or pass through a space with a treasure, rotate the treasure card of that type to the next number. Also, as I've already mentioned, when you collect King's Foil, as we have just done, we also need to rotate the croc card. So now all of the players have moved the boat according to the number in their corner, starting with the light colored corner and playing clockwise. Now there's only one thing left to do, and it's an important one, move the croc. Look at the number on the croc card pointing toward the swamp. This is the number of spaces the croc must move. And beware, the croc must always move closer to the boat. In this example, the croc card is a two, so we've moved the croc two spaces. If the croc ever catches the boat, we're swamped. The mission is a failure and all players share defeat. So let's review what happens when a let's move card is played. First, the pilot card moves to the next player in clockwise order. Second, starting with the player with the light colored corner, all players in clockwise order may move the boat according to the number in their corner, including the pilot who gets a plus one movement bonus. And finally, the croc moves. You've just learned how to play and resolve the Let's Move card. As you saw, these are very important cards with some detailed steps. You'll pick up on them quickly, but feel free to take it slow until you've got them all down. Before we move on, I'd like to note that in a two or three player game, there will be some corners that don't point at anyone. When you play a Let's Move card, skip these corners. If the light colored corner doesn't point at a player, the next player in clockwise order from the light colored corner moves the boat first. Now that I've shown you how to play a card, I'm going to show you the other turn option you have. Discard a card. You will typically discard if you have no card you can play, but you will find that discarding also comes with its own set of benefits to help you secure victory. Select an empty space on the table for the discard pile. To discard, place one card from your hand face up to this pile and announce you're discarding. You may discard any card you want, regardless of other cards in the discard pile. After you discard, take one of three actions, each of which is listed on your swamped guide card. You can either move the boat one space, rotate a pile of coordinate cards, or move the pilot card to a different player. You may only take one of these three actions, and after you take it, the croc must move. So be careful when you choose to discard. If the croc catches the boat, like I stated earlier, you're swamped, and the game is over. All players share defeat. If not, draw a card and end your turn as normal. There is one special case when the croc will not move. If the croc is ever supposed to move a number of spaces that would cause it to catch the boat, first draw a card from the deck, if one is available. If you draw a let's move card, the croc stays put and we're saved. On any other card, the croc moves and catches us. Place the card you drew back on the bottom of the deck. Now you've learned your turn options. That is, to play a card or discard a card and take the associated actions. After completing your turn actions, don't forget to draw a card from the deck if one is available and end your turn. Now let's learn how to end a round, start a new round, end the game, and complete final scoring. The round ends whenever a third Let's Move card is played and resolved, or whenever all players' hands are empty. In either case, complete the round by finding out who wins the end of round bonus. To do this, find the sum of each player's corner numbers. For example, here you can see the photojournalist has a sum of 9, because she has a 3, a 3, a 2, and a 1 in her corners. The executive has a round score of 7. The sum of the upper right-hand corners 2, 1, 2, and 2. The engineer has 10, the sum of the lower right-hand corners, 1, 3, 3, and 3. 
and the biochemist earns the lower left-hand corners of 4, 4, 1, and 2 for the highest round score, 11. The player with the highest round score gets to move the boat two bonus spaces. So the biochemist wins the two bonus spaces, plus one because she also has the pilot card, for a total of three spaces. Let's move those spaces now. As you can see, I've moved the boat to a new card, the last one so far in the swamp. Whenever you move the boat to the last card, draw one more card from the deck and add it to the swamp. If no cards are available, the swamp remains the same size until the next round. At the end of a round, after any bonus moves are made, shuffle all of the coordinate cards and let's move cards from the play area, the discard pile, and players' hands to reform the deck. Don't include any cards that are part of the swamp. These remain until the end of the game. Begin a new round as you did at the start of the game by dealing each player three cards from the freshly shuffled deck. Also like before, deal the pilot two extra cards. The pilot will choose any two cards from their hand to add to the swamp to start the new round, just like at the start of the game. As the game progresses, the swamp will continue to grow and expand each round. But be careful, if you play too long, the deck will run low. If you are ever unable to deal each player's starting hand at the beginning of a round, the game is over, and you're swamped. But supposing your mission was a success, that is, you've collected at least three king spoil and exited the swamp safely, then it's time to score and determine an overall winner. Reveal your adventurer card and find out which objective earned you the most points. Let's take a look at the adventurers we just played. Let's start with the photojournalist. She earns 2 points for each blue fisher and each mooncap collected, or 14 points if the boat left the swamp on the 7th card or later. Supposing we did not reach the 7th swamp card, and these are the treasures we collected, the photojournalist would score 12 points, 2 for each mooncap and 2 for each blue fisher. Now let's look at the executive. He earns 5 points for every set of 2 king's foil collected, or 9 points if exactly 3 king's foil are collected. Since we collected five king's foil, that is two sets of two for 10 points. If we had collected a sixth king's foil, the executive would have finished the game with three sets of two for 15 points. Now let's look at the engineer. He earns two points per treasure collected most or six points per treasure collected least. King's foil was collected most with five, which would earn the engineer 10 points. Heart root was collected least with one which would earn the engineer six points. So the engineer chooses the higher of his two objectives for a final score of 10. Now let's look at the biochemist. She earns two points for each blue fisher and one point for each king's foil, or 15 points if at least five king's foil and three blue fisher are collected. As you can see, we've collected five king's foil and three blue fisher, which meets the second objective of the biochemist. So the biochemist earns 15 points. And that makes the biochemist the overall champion. One final note before we go. If there is ever a tie for the winner of the game or winner of the round bonus, the player currently holding the pilot card gets to decide the winner of the tie, even if that means they select themselves. So that's how you play Swamped. If you have any questions, feel free to email support at bellweathergames.com. Thank you for watching.